Hey folks, Ed Hartz from Classic Pistol. Today I'm joined with Rick Fratt from Classic Pistol. As you've seen Rick before, but this is kind of his uh, video debut. We're, we're actually getting you to help out because Rick is extremely knowledgeable when it comes to old Smith and Wessons, and that's what we've got today. This is pretty interesting. Uh, Rick, tell us about what we're looking at here. So basically, back in the '70s and early '80s, Smith and Wesson shipped their guns like this. They were shipped in a brown cardboard carton, and inside is an, probably going to be another box and maybe a wood presentation case. Uh, the higher end Smiths, Model 27s, Model 29s, Model 25s were shipped this way. So this would have come right from the factory, gone right to an FFL or, or a, a dealer that would have ordered this gun, and that's how they shipped them. Um, till we open it up, we're not sure exactly what we're going to find as far as condition-wise, but uh, it's pretty interesting to see something like this. It's kind of out of a uh, out of a time warp, so um, yeah. pretty cool. As a little bit of backstory about this, uh, we have a customer who had an FFL in the late '70s and early '80s, and his thought was that he was going to open a gun shop one day. Well, he never opened a gun shop, and he came to us and said, "I've got some stuff sitting around. I think it's time to get rid of it." He said, and one of them is really interesting because it hasn't been opened. So uh, in just a minute here, we're actually going to open this gun up. Uh, we believe that this is 1979. 79, yep. yep. So if the serial number of the gun inside matches this, uh, this hasn't been opened since 1979. It hasn't seen the light of day. Yep. So this is interesting because we're either going to see a beautiful nickel 4-inch uh, 44 Magnum or maybe it's a rusted hunk of metal in there, right? We don't know. Maybe there's a brick in here. Yeah. We have no idea. But we're going to find out together. Here we go for the first time in 42, maybe 43 years. 43 years, yeah. We're going to open this sealed box that came to us uh, from a collector. 1979 Smith & Wesson. It's like well, history happening right here. It is. It's like opening a time machine. As we're only going to open this long enough to take a look and see what's inside, to verify that it is what it is, we're going to show you and we're going to seal it back up. Go ahead, Rick. So since the gun is a nickel gun, Smith & Wesson shipped all their nickel guns in a silver cardboard box. Their blue guns would have been in a blue cardboard box. So. And this is exactly how they came. No end labels here. Absolutely right? pristine. Well, end labels are on that shipping cart. Guys, if you're familiar with Smith & Wesson, with collecting Smith & Wessons, unless you were around in, in 1979, you've never seen a silver box in such good shape. No, I mean, absolutely not. Sick. Oh, we do and, have the presentation. Just box. as I thought, they nice. uh, they did include a presentation case with the gun, which would have been all nice wood and dovetail ends. I mean, they really built these guns really well. And yeah, you can see the flocking over the years. Even though it hasn't been out in the air or anything, the flocking has absolutely deteriorated just like most of them do. And yeah, when we touch it, it so, might fall apart here. Yeah, so so basically the toolkit should be put in there. The toolkit's probably still in this box here, but this is the way the box would have been. And kind of interestingly enough, um, in the late 70s, Smith & Wesson angled their guns facing to the right. Uh, guns prior to this would have been the presentation cases would have been angled towards the left. Nice. So it's yeah, this is definitely uh, pretty neat, neat stuff. Cool. We'll try to put this. So all it's back not together. just my Smith and Wesson that the flocking has fallen apart. No, it's pretty common. It happens with just about all. Unfortunately, the guns are, are much more durable than the flock. Right. Is there any paperwork? Anything else inside? No, that's it. That's all. Okay. It's probably going to be in there unless they stack something. But I'm, I'm now nah, I'm not going to pull that out because this is very fragile. I just felt it kind of crush underneath, just foam rubber, so uh, paperwork may be in there, so let's see. All right. Ed, do the uh, honors of opening it. Here we go. Please don't be rusty. How about it? And there we go, so we got the tool kit. All right, so it's going to come with a mop. Most people call this a screwdriver, but Smith guys call it a sight adjustment tool or a sat. And it looks like we're going to have all our paperwork, an owner's manual, some advertisement, holsters, and a warranty card. And I'm going to let you do the uh, honors. Right, here we go. Here we go. Taking that vapor paper off. We need a, we need a drum roll. Yeah, it's not, not a drum roll. Oh boy. 
That part's not rusted. Yep, wow. no rust on it. Nah. Look at that. Guys, this is the first time that light is shining on this gun since it left the Smith & Wesson physics, before it left the Smith & Wesson factory in 1979. Yep. Absolutely. So this would have been the flagship of all Smith & Wesson revolvers back then. This particular gun came with what they call triple T's, which is a target hammer, a target trigger, and target grips. The other beautiful thing about these are the top straps, the white outline rear sight, the red ramp insert front sight. And of course, these were all pin cylinders, meaning the cartridge would sit flush to the cylinder when the gun is loaded. And of course, that little pin there denotes that the barrel is pinned. So the term pinned and recessed applies to this gun. Smith & Wesson did that up until about 1981 on all their Magnum models. I'm going to read the serial number out loud because that's actually why we had to open this to verify the serial number. So the serial number that I've got is November 662324. That's correct. That's what matches the end label. Okay. So there is a little bit of a turn line. So I always wondered. I always wondered about the turn line. And guys, if you can come in here and look real close, you'll see that there is a very slight turn line that is visible on this gun. So we can say that, yeah, sometimes they left the factory, but... <laughs> they did. Smith & Wesson would have test fired this gun, and generally what they do is they test fired every other cylinder. So, Ed, if you open that cylinder up again, look at the face of that cylinder and see if there's any uh, carbon. Yep, I've got one here. Right. And one there. It looks like they skipped. Oh yeah, it looks like they so skipped every other one. Yeah, so it's three, and that's that's exactly how they did it from the factory. They make sure that the gun functioned the way it should. So, so this, we can uh, see that every other cylinder had been fired for one round. Absolutely. A little bit of a, and that's just from one round of the test fire. That's, that's correct. correct. That's correct. Beautiful. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's a real deal. It's pristine. Uh, doesn't get any uh, newer than that. It's awesome. Yeah, fantastic. Cool. Guys, thanks for watching. Uh, check out Classic Pistol for other videos. Uh, if you're not following us on social media, you want to find us on Instagram, you want to find us on Facebook. We have lots of cool videos like this, shooting tips and tricks, safety stuff, and all the new firearms that we get, as well as Classic Pistols in place. So Absolutely. check out Classic Pistols social media and our YouTube channel as well. Uh, stop in if you're in Eastern Pennsylvania. All right, see some cool stuff and have fun with it. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks Back for in the case it goes.